Hello, everyone. Hi. All right, so let's get started here today. There's not a lot on the agenda, uh, but I start off with the items, um, uh, the updates from the working groups. Ryan, would you like to start about uh, AirGap? Sure. Um, so things have been going really well for the AirGap working group. Um, uh, we report about four meetings in now. Um, we have demos lined up for the next two meetings. Uh, so if anyone's interested in, in joining, uh, we have somebody from Microsoft giving a technical deep dive of CNAB and uh, Microsoft's Porter to go along with that. Um, and that will be a week from this Friday. And then uh, the, our following meeting, so I guess three weeks, um, we will have a, um, uh, a demo slash um, discussion from uh, uh, IBM such we had about some of the the bootstrapping and code um, container signing um, uh, tools that they've used for OpenShift uh, in air-gapped environments. Uh, other than that, um, things are going well. We have a charter finalized, and um, yeah, and we are working on our you know, user stories for how companies and, and teams are deploying Kubernetes and other CNCF projects in an air-gapped environment, um, and all of that is linked in our um, our landing page in the uh, the app delivery um, GitHub, so you can take a look there. Yeah, I put the link into the agenda. So what we did for the working groups that they have a subdirectory in uh, 
our in our GitHub repo, Airgap already has submitted it, and the operator working group will do uh, the same uh, pretty soon, and they should have it there. I think we have nobody from Airgap here today. No. Uh, from what I talked with them, they're currently working on finalizing the document on the definition of uh, uh, operators and talking to them, they want to have a first version by next week that is then available for reviews. It's mostly about cleaning up the document right now. So we don't have a, oh no, it's me. Uh, we don't have a lot more topic on the agenda for today on project reviews. I think we are progressing uh, nicely. There's still two going on serverless working group, uh, serverless workflows is uh, still ongoing on our side. Same obviously for Artifact Hub, the others so far are with uh the tlc right now and especially for sandbox projects if you haven't followed the tlc call this week there's currently a discussion on how sandbox projects are handled now going forward due to some changes i can put in the link to the uh, updated document uh, the effect on current uh, submissions is not yet fully defined whether they will push the current ones through or they will follow the new approach i'll just put in a link into the agenda for those who are interested especially those in a uh, current submission process i think there's not anything else on the agenda unless somebody has anything i think we still have the logo when we have amy here but beyond that Logo bits. Um, let me go back and check on that issue here. Um, so because I don't think that uh, critical mass yet. Uh, maybe we can talk about what ongoing work items we, we've got as a group that uh, could use help. We've got some people looks like they want to participate, give a hand. What what current work items could use um, could use people's help. Anything? Uh, I think on the main work group items, uh, there's one thing we haven't really been investing a lot of time into, which was the landscape that we initially wanted to work on. It's like having a landscape on app delivery. This was always like going back and forth, but nobody really took the lead or the effort to really move this forward. We honestly also never really took the time to really discuss uh, what the landscape is going to look like. I think there's not also a lot of landscapes around. But the idea was to reuse the model that Harry initially worked on, like these uh, app delivery and layers, and try to assign the current CNCF projects into those layers. So this is definitely and so a very good point. Uh, this is something that we should be investing some more time into aligning current CNCF projects into like a kind of landscape following that model. So, uh, uh, let me ask you a question here. If we're going to, do we have a picture of those layers? Because one of the really powerful things about the landscape is that somebody can show up as an end user who's just a consumer because like 99% of people who are involved in CNCF projects don't contribute a lick of nothing. They just, uh, they consume it and they're happy consumers and they, they're trying to find the stuff. And so the experience of discovering things should be, what does somebody who has to deal with app delivery, building and operating applications, what are they going to be searching and using for in that taxonomy? And so I'm curious what we've got and how it maps to the kinds of things that uh, they do and they need, especially since so many of us here are builders of things and not necessarily in that same mindset of just a consumer. I know I'm totally not in that just a consumer space. And so I'm curious how that mapping works. 
Uh, let me just bring up, uh, I'll post a link here in a second, but that's a good point. Okay. Just give me a minute here. The nice thing about Chrome is that you can have so many windows. All right. So I posted the link in the agenda. Oh, let me just also quickly share here. This was also something that we haven't really worked on a lot recently. Just share here. Okay, there are even some comments in there that people have recently done. So this was the latest picture that we've done. It was also the one that was presented at KubeCon, where uh, we basically put in, like, we initially called them layers and then refrained from calling them layers because people weren't entirely happy with uh, the terms. But what we broke it down is more or less application <laughs> definition to how do you define your application. That was uh, one of the key areas, how in Kubernetes to actually define what my application is. And um, like how, what's the descriptor, what can I use? Um, then obviously the packaging, which especially with AirGap becomes even more interesting. Like how can I put like this whole thing together and install it somewhere? So then we're moving also to installing entire applications. And this is also something I think people are wondering. So how can I ship it? And I have built my Kubernetes application. Like how can I ship the whole thing? And a discussion about the whole thing was Obviously, not just uh, my my YAML files or my Helm charts, but also the containers, all the security uh, bits and pieces that I need, and everything that I wanted to hear here. And then it moves into a more uh, operational level, like how do we really support application that deployment and rollout from like lifecycle management. This is where operators would fall in, as an example. But also, so, how do we support like strategies? And then it goes into the automation layer. Yeah, because in each side of this, you're going to have consumers and producers, and the consumers will significantly outweigh the consumers. And so, or the consumers will significantly outweigh the producers in terms of things. So, okay. So if I'm a consumer coming in, what am I going to be looking for when I want to discover something? Like what kind of categories would a consumer come at this stuff first and say, I need to consume stuff. How am I going to discover it? Like what are the different things they'll want to, to select in their landscape that says, Hey, this is how I'm filtering on. And, and I'm not sure that something like application deploy and rollout is something that's going to click with them. Yeah, Matt, I, I was under the understanding that the consumers here for the output from from SIG app delivery would potentially be people who've, who may be developers, but may, maybe somebody's, you know, produced a package or maybe a, a, a product owner, a product manager says, hey, I want my package to, I want to deploy my package to my customers on, on Kubernetes. What am I going to, what am I going to need for that? Um, I, I kind of viewed that, that that might be a consumer of, of the output from, from this group. Well, if we're doing a landscape around app stuff, we're going to get lots of people who just say, I need to install my thing. So how do I find the things that will help me here? What kind of database should I use? And so they're going to approach it from that consumer perspective. Yeah, but isn't that like outside that the scope of uh, SIG app delivery though? So if we're doing yeah. a landscape for this, that's meant for people to just roll up. Uh, I would expect people far outside of SIG app delivery to do it because it's people who are can saying, Hey, they're doing this. So if we have to do it, then we, we really probably need to know down there that the scope is that this is people who are producing things for other people to consume. Cause right now, tons of people come to this landscape that's on the screen and say, Hey, I'm trying to figure out what stuff is cloud ready from who, what's right. What can I start using? So they might say, Hey, what are the service proxies that I can consume? I'm not developing service proxies. I need to use this in my stuff. Who's out there so I can start poking at them. 
right? And it's totally a consumer of the technologies, not somebody who's developing something necessarily. And I expect a ton of those people in the app space to come along to a landscape that app delivery puts out, unless it explicitly says, this is for people who are building tools, not for consumers. Unless that's like a tagline at the top that's big and bold, people are going to start poking around saying, I'm looking for technologies I can use and install and I'm not a developer of. Yeah, I, I got it's you, Matt. But, apps, yeah. but, but some of these categories like, you know, you got remote procedure call category and, and API gateway and, and the container runtime. I mean, these uh, general... <laughs> person that I would construe as to be a consumer, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, isn't going to be looking for a good RPC, um, you know, um, uh, solution or, or what API gateway they want to use, right? They're, they're just looking for the, give me the apps, give me the end user apps, right? But the landscape contains a lot more than just the end user apps. It contains the apps that, that, people will be using to, to deliver the apps, right? So there's kind of layers of consumers. There's the middleware producers, there's the, um, you know, the infrastructure producers, it goes, you know, up and down the stack. And, you know, my view, and it might be the wrong view, but my view is the application delivery um, group would, would help people who, want to put their apps up in a, in a cloud, cloud native and Kubernetes environment, right? Uh, so it would be more leaning towards the developer. I, I, I agree with you. I don't think we should just assume everybody benefiting from, from that delivery is going to be a developer, but, uh, but there could be layers to that, right? I want to chime in um, the landscape for me. So I fall into this category of I'm both a consumer and a producer. So I'm a vendor. And so I sometimes come to the cloud native landscape with that hat on. And sometimes I come to it with the hat on of, Hey, I'm trying to deploy an application or I, you know, whatever I'm trying to understand Kubernetes. So I'm not sure that, that a landscape should be, targeted at one persona or the other, the producer or, or the consumer. I, you know, I'm relatively new to this group, so I wasn't around the last time we talked about having a landscape for app delivery. I love the cloud native landscape from the CNCF, but it's pretty broad in scope. And so what I think you're talking about here is saying, let's create a landscape that helps people unpack First of all, the categories that you were showing just a moment ago, the different layers, or we're not calling them layers, the different categories, those are pr prospective categories for then bucketing things into those categories, various components that components or standards or best practices that address that category. So address the category of bundling, address the category of packaging, address the category of deployment, address the category of observability, maybe. I don't know. And so that was my understanding here. So I'm not sure. I'm not getting as wrapped around the axle as you are, Matt, on whether it's consumer or producer. I, I think the only thing that I was noticing is the producer was the part that's talked about and the consumer element was missing. I, I tend to agree to you. I, I'd like to have uh, both, yeah. but the documentation we have is very producer oriented and I think it lacks that consumer element and I show up as a consumer all the time looking at these things oh yeah yeah that's probably true maybe that document is but I think that as we build a landscape fair enough let's make sure that we build the landscape not just for ourselves but for the like you say far larger numbers of consumers that aren't going to have as much of the you know inside baseball context that we do yeah, maybe to, to share something, but we had this initial discussion like a very long time back. It, one of the main drivers for this was you come to the cloud native community, obviously you have your Kubernetes cluster running, and then you're starting to build enterprise grade applications. And you start to have like all this enterprise grade app delivery problems where some of them we started to address like this air gap one, but are you specific? But just a very simple question. Obviously, I'm not just running one microservice, I'm running 25. 
and they have a relationship. Uh, where do I put this? They might have an order of how things should get started up. Uh, where, where do I put this? Or if they have an order of upgrading, or if they say, okay, it's great that I have this thing, but should there even be, how do I like package this up that Great Gods gets to air gap? But also what I see at least a lot with uh, the people who I work with is say, well, pointing to an image on Docker Hub is, is not how you ship applications. So no, nobody's downloading an image from, uh, from Docker Hub in an enterprise setting without properly scanning and taking care of those images. They might do it for like a proof of concept, but I very rarely see people just taking images that are on the public internet and installing them into production clusters. But then you realize, okay, this kind of gets now complicated. So first I want to like define all these dependencies and it's not just obviously the services, it's security credentials and how do they properly get attached to my application at a certain stage. And I want to move those other things along there. And then the question was now assume we have like this definition, assume we have these components there, which tools more or less can take these artifacts that we have produced and move them along uh, these these deployment mechanisms that, that the way we want them to be there. Yeah, and that, that's I a good a point. I think components play in a... that that's that's a direct consumer use case, I believe, because uh, you know when we work with customers and then they they start relying on more than one application, which is really quick, right? Now they're juggling. Uh, a number of different applications they're, they're downloading from a number of different sources and they're saying, well, what, what are my options here to manage this process, right? And uh, this, this could be a tool to show them, hey, these are the options that, that um, or, or, or these are options that, that, that you have to, to deliver, deploy, to package, to manage some of these, uh, these items. So of course, um, I, I guess from uh, since since I'm working with a, a lot of software vendors, my point of view is is a little different. But um, you know, we're we're trying to help them use best pack practices and find best practices for for packaging and, and managing their applications, so that uh, when our solutions team wants to integrate their software with with one of our solutions, we we can do that in a already known uh, reliable way and, um, and and giving them a place to start. Like it really answers the, 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 what, what I'd like to see uh, is, is our ability to, to quickly answer the question, like what options are out there and how, and where do I, where can I get started? Like, and, and those two are the questions that I hear the most from uh, granted from, from developers and, and, people representing software products, but also uh, in the use case that you put out there, certainly once customers start relying upon these applications and have several of them in a production environment that they need to manage the life cycle for, they need to understand how that life cycle works and, and we could help them with that too. So I, I kind of noticed two things in here though. One is the kind of thing that you're going to get in the landscape, which is basically just a dashboard of different projects you can filter by category. And that's actually not going to tell you here are good practices and there are going to be people who disagree on what the good practices are and why and how you, you touch things, you know, tie things together. And then there are actually going to be what are practices and how do you take holistic things into account? Security was brought up here. But quite frankly, most of the stuff that I read about these processes gets you into the getting started and the pretty easy stuff. But then they never dig into, does this system even deal with security? And if so, how do I tie it into my processes, right? We're not going to fit something like that into a landscape. And so we need something else in order to walk through those and probably multiple different situations. And so I kind of see two things being brought up here um, that have different contexts, which I think are both useful. I agree, Matt. I agree with that comment. And, and yeah, it's, it's, it's not going to be, it's not going to be the end answer. It's, and it's, however we lay it out, it's going to miss something. It's going to, it's, we can't, we can't cover all the perspectives. Uh, agree there. Yeah, and I don't see the, the goal of the landscape to be the, the be all end all of what this group produces. I think it's just one thing. 
Yeah, it was this this initial idea. So just so sort of how it got started. This was what we started to look into, and we didn't invest that much time into. We picked smaller bits and pieces, which is fine. Uh, the good if thing you is can answer, what is app delivery? I get that a lot. What is app delivery? Okay. Uh, that's a question I get a lot uh, from from the uh, technical folks here at Lenovo. What, you, you're talking to us about app delivery. What what do you include in that? Ooh, ooh, ooh. I, I have an idea on this because I've been around since, since the beginning when app delivery was just an idea because they said, hey, SIG apps, we need to talk about apps. Oh, there's Kubernetes SIG apps and we don't want the name to be confusing even though they have very similar scopes and ideas. So we need a different name. So we're going to call it Kubernetes SIG app delivery. And in talking to some of the TOC members, they have talked about everything fitting in here from like tools that plug into Visual Studio code and help you do development all the way through things like obviously Helm, which are package managers and stuff like that. And so that whole like wide area was the original scope of where they were thinking, but they didn't want the name to be confusing with the existing Kubernetes SIG apps. Well, when we worked on the charter, I think the, the way I would phrase it is uh, to talk about app delivery as pretty much everything from artifact availability to artifact retirement in production. I think where we had a lot of discussions, do we want to put in like, how do we structure an application from what it is right now to cloud native app? And we said, well, it, it's a nice idea, but it's also a bit vague and, and very wide. And it was about pretty much everything that I needed from, okay, I have now this artifact, which in most cases obviously is a container. To the point where I push it through my, where I deploy it, I run it, I manage it, and I eventually get rid of it. Um, and replace it by, by a new version. That, that would be as a, my definition and from what we did back then is what we talk about delivery. Uh, I think my definition goes a bit wider to the retirement piece because a lot of people think, okay, now we have shipped it. So yeah, but you have to update it. You have to retire it eventually and get it out of product. It's also part like updating an application. It's also done. Otherwise we have exactly this like DevOps world where we have it. Okay, we have shipped it. It's great. But now it should be everything running. So I want to have all like the observability artifacts there as well that I need from like monitoring config, uh, configuration and and so far. But I think to move this forward, I think there's still a number of questions that we can agree on. And where, I guess you mentioned like working with customers, questions that they have which also initially started this conversation. We can start by answering those questions and a landscape uh, might fall out, a white paper might fall out. But I think these are very important questions. Like how do I package my application? So can, can I first ask that if we've got some of these questions, would people who've collected some of those questions be willing to write them down so the rest of us can read them and process them as a first step? You know, I don't want to jump to trying to answer them with our own styles. I, I actually want to sit back and look at them and ponder them from the different methodologies we have so they can be answered in the different ways. But I think actually reading them and getting them from end users and people with questions is a fantastic first step to help us. Yeah, that, that was my proposal to actually put them into, into a doc and then discuss those questions. Does it make sense for our people to like, let's put, okay, like the key questions that people have and think this is, these are all the things you have to think of when you put your first application into production, like delivering to all of those stages. And also to, to your point, Jeff, this is what people usually ask me. Like, it must yeah, be simple I'm, things like, where, where do I put contribute. a database string? Yeah. Where do I put a database string for a production database? Hmm. Yeah, I'm happy to, to gather some of that here um, and contribute that. I, um, what's the best way for me to be able to do that? Uh, so what I will do, I will, uh, as usually like create a small doc where we just go through and just put the questions in there and I'll try to help organize them and I will share them then on the mailing list and obviously also in the agenda documents, I'll do both. So I'll do this right off the bat here and we just get started. I will just throw in some example questions so that people just get started. And for the next meeting, we can then go through those and then decide on next steps and which one we want to tackle and, and how we want to move there. But just for the time being, throw all of them in there. I just volunteer to try to structure them in what I fit is 
uh, like a good structure so we can have a structured discussion. Obviously, if you disagree on the structuring, just let me know and we can we can discuss. So I'll create it. Let's throw things in there. Maybe with the question, uh, ideally, just don't put the question there. It would also be interesting how you usually answer it. Because the question sure. might be sometimes and a bit misleading. Who it's coming from, right? The, the perspective yeah. of whom it's coming from. Yeah, yeah. context uh, would really help. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let, let's start off with like the semi-structured approach and uh, I'll try to put this into a, a format that's then easier to digest, but just feel free to throw in things um, that usually come up, that you usually deal with. And let's hope you this. And I'll actually take care of this today. So I'll just create the doc and put it in here. Doc for collecting questions. And we'll also share it via the mailing list uh, right after this. Fair for everyone to get this as a start. I just like to have them all in a doc rather than tearing it on the mailing list. We did it in the past, and usually these mailing list discussions uh, tend to get rather complex. I think the first form of collaboration is usually a, a Google Doc is usually good because people can comment on what others mean by this and, and share it. Well, guys, I got to drop for another call, but I, I will look for that um, in the mailing list and I'll certainly respond and, and give you some context and questions that we see um, that, that might be helpful for us. Okay, that was good. So uh, thanks, guys. First, uh, thanks. Um, okay, so let's get started on this one. Amy, you said we don't have critical mass yet for our logo. You don't. We got like maybe like three people weighing in on here. Possibly four. And that's not nearly can, enough to be able to say like, hey, nice things. Yes, go ahead. Can, can, can we drop yeah. in a link here so some of us can do this while we're sort of paying attention to yeah, the meeting sure. right now? Yeah, yeah, here you go. Thank like you. there's a lot of like the hey I really like things and like some things I like and there's not like the uh, <laughs> there there really isn't critical mass in here so um uh, what are we thinking around um locos because this one's been open a, lot, a, a bit I think it was maybe a, I think for a lot of people it's okay it's just fine what it is I know that there is some people who have a very strong opinion about this one. Exactly, and that's why I wanted to be able to make sure the people that had strong opinions were able to put them in. Yeah, my, my only strong opinion was a slightly negative one. I said, I don't want to see actual containers and ships. <laughs> that was my only requirement that I had. I can't see containers and ships anymore for cloud native applications. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll put it in for comments and I'll nag people on the mailing list. And That would be lovely. And um, everywhere until they just comment so that I stop nagging them. <laughs> I think this is close to the like code of contact of, of, of harassing people to comment on something, but I'll try to- It's a directed focus here. I think being able to have people yeah. weigh in on this would be appropriate. So when I click on the link, um, Amy, that you have in here, Oh, I only see one embedded. It's this. It's the round two of designs. What I want people to focus on. Um, uh, it's the embedded piece in here. So uh, the one that I'm looking for directly is. Go ahead and pop this one up. Lines. Is it that PDF? Sig app delivery v two. Yes. Okay. Well, I appreciate your comments. There are more like things to be able to be directed at. Say also the. Uh, oh, you get a legit uh, comment from me. I know. <laughs> I know. All is good. Uh, by the way, in the meantime, I put the doc in there. Just let me know where you can, in case you can't access it for the app delivery related questions. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I'll then also share it on the mailing list after this one here.
Okay, so then let's people comment. Anything else people want to bring up today? I, on the logos, I noticed that many of the logos are these. Is there some significance to that other than they're cool? So was it to me or to Amy? Just, just to anybody. Um, uh, just because, I, like I said, I noticed a lot of them have bees. Um, and I wondered whether there was some, some conversation where bees mean something special to some folks around app delivery. But since nobody's speaking up, no, actually, I think it was more about like the, hey, like ant hives or bees, bees are looking at large nests. This came from a comment on December 5th, okay. further up in the thread. Yeah, I think we had some very strong bee supporters in the past. Yeah. That was the only reason yep. why. Okay. There's also like the kangaroos in there. Yep, there's a couple of kangaroos. Couple of kangaroos, couple of ants. So the idea was, I think other other six are using animals as well. That's why we came up with animals, I think, in the first place. Okay. That's why we've we've ended up with like kind of like the vague animals. Yeah, they got that's that's how we got to you and on some part some people just like bees because they're obviously building stuff. That's also why we have doves in there who sh ship stuff. Okay. So I think overall we we are flexible. The only real veto that you will get from me is no containers, no ships. The rest I can <laughs> actually deal with perfectly. Yeah. Uh, these are the only two, I think, but just sticking to like is a common scheme across uh, six uh, makes uh, sense. And I think it's right now mostly animals, right? Yeah, Maybe you would know, yeah. Yeah, by and large, it's mostly animals. So um, uh, again, getting more feedback here would be super. Um, we can do a proper vote on these. I just want to be able to get a sense of like which ones people are looking at because voting on like all of these millions <laughs> is going to be a little rough. Get one or two votes on each and that doesn't tell you the darn thing. Exactly. Well. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll back people a bit to the third one. Is there a repository somewhere that shows all the logos of the other things? Or do we have to jump here and there to see them all? Um, you know, I think those are over in the artwork repo. Let me check. Yeah, I'm just dropping into here into CNCF art repo. Because I know that we've uploaded things Yep, those are over in uh, Other, and we've got both SIG security and uh, SIG storage, so. Okay, here's a tip for you, don't choose the white one, you won't see anything. So yeah, security, I have open here, that's the box. Yep. It's this one here. And storage, I can color. PNG. That's a clam. It's a clam, I think, yeah. Let's 
CNCF logo behind it. But I think we also want to keep mostly the same style, I assume, that we already have. Yeah, it would be nice, for yeah. example, if they all kind yeah. of superimpose something atop the CNCF logo if we had consistency with that element. That would be cool. Okay. Yeah, let's share it again on the mailing list, maybe with the and also have a link to the existing examples that's already out there. Um, I'll compile it for people. Again, I might be the easiest one to handle here. No ships, no containers, totally happy. <laughs> so you abstain on your vote, except for negative votes? In case <laughs> no, I'm not proud. I don't know what I'm going to like, but these are just the two that I really can't see anymore. Like the way where people talk about how yeah. it maps. It's like, okay, it's a container, it's a ship. Say, so, yeah, we've been there, we've done that. Yeah. And we most likely don't want to take a whale because this could get us into copyright issues. Okay, good. So uh, then for the next meeting, uh, I'll I put already the link to that question in the doc. Uh, I'll try to direct, send it out to the mailing list right after this one. Let's collect the questions and the next time we really have something to discuss. And just maybe one more thing. If you have a question and you're using a certain tool, we might also have it just listed in there. So that might make sense. So I'll make like a template of what a question could look like and like what your answer looks like and which tool you're using. Uh, which tool do you think that it fulfills the CNCF, uh, fulfills these requirements? I wouldn't necessarily limit to um, CNCF projects. What I find quite, find quite interesting yesterday in the TUC meeting, I think it was SIG Runtime, but was also reaching out to other projects that are doing interesting things in their space. So maybe also with this exercise, we find out that we want to engage with some other projects uh, along this effort as well, which doesn't mean obviously that we want them necessarily to become CNCF projects or force them to do so, which we can't anyways, uh, but also might provide some interesting insights of uh, projects and tools that people uh, have worked with. All right, I think then we are done for today. Thank you. Good. Bye everyone. Bye. Take care, everyone. Hi.